Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin quickly with today's class. So guys, we have launched RJ Sabin Nabad's live courses. You have the opportunity now to connect with the mentor. You can uh, attend these classes of the respective courses if you really want to enjoy the or have the feel of the offline classes okay obviously we cannot create the brick and mortar institution for you but yes we can give you that feel in the form of interpersonal connection that you can create with your mentor so that was all you can check out the timetable and if you want to know more about these courses you can go, uh, go to our app application as well as website www.anujindal.in to scroll the website and know more about the courses if you want to connect with us you can call us or drop a mail to us you can also post your query on discussion.anujindal.in and telegram channel to help so guys on the telegram channel i have already provided you the pdf of the session quickly download the pdf keep it with you keep it beside you and then read the questions read the content and listen to me very carefully okay okay so let's uh, begin with the first question knowledge portal for khadi is a platform developed by the center of excellence for khadi which is located at dash to provide design directions to the khadi institutions obviously it is very obvious from its name itself khadi oh uh, sorry knowledge portal for khadi that means it is uh, aiming to provide knowledge about khadi and what kind of knowledge knowledge about the design patterns and to make the khadi product more attractive now this portal has been developed by the center of excellence for khadi which is located at the national institute of fashion design fashion technology in delhi so that is the news all about the next question is who heads the committee formed by the department of Com consumer affairs to develop a comprehensive framework on rights to repair so here nidhi khare is the right answer now what is this right to repair first of all do know this fact that nidhi khare is the additional secretary within the department of consumer affairs now this is also an important fact it can be asked from you. now what is this right to repair okay so basically this is an act passed by the us and by doing so us became the world's first country to pass this right to repair for digital electronic products and this is the news in june 2022 okay now uh, we are seeing that in july india is also following the footsteps of us now what is it what is this right to, to repair in order to repair any kind of electronic product or any of your gadgets you need to have the knowledge so through this act in the us as well as in india also we are uh, mandating this requirement for the manufacturers of the products to make the information regarding the spare parts of the products available to the customers so that they know what are the ingredients or sorry the spare parts involved in one product for example let's take your laptop you have an mi laptop and you don't even know what kind of uh, products or what kind of spare parts are in this laptop as well as their uh, companies okay from where they have originated or which company has manufactured those spare parts if you don't even know about those uh, information how would you repair it okay so obviously a laptop cannot be repaired at home but similar kind of very small products can be repaired at home and information of the spare parts would, uh, would make it easy for you as well as the repair shop the third party repairers the third party here is the repair shop and the information about the spare parts would make it easier for the repair shop owners or the workers to repair the products easily so that is the idea now read this statement the committee will suggest measures to increase the transparency regarding the spare parts of consumer goods to harmonize trade between the original equipment manufacturers and the third party buyers and sellers okay as in this case mi will have to make it available the spare parts that it is using in this laptop at the same time we are having the knowledge 
what kind of products are being used what kind of spare parts are used in this laptop uh, so it is basically going to increase the transparency and help us in repairing our small uh, small small uh, equipments we, which we can do on our own obviously laptop is a very complex design and a very complex machine we cannot repair it until or unless we are from the science or engineering background so that is the basic idea of this rights to repair now similar function is this right to repair bill is playing in us okay uh, you can read it out here that manufacturers have to make parts tools information and software available to consumers and independent repair shops okay so that is the basic idea moving ahead which city was declared as the first cultural and tourism capital of the shanghai cooperation organization for 2022 to 2023 so here guys it is india's city so varanasi india's oldest one of the oldest and the cultural capital of india as well is now being designated as the cultural capital of sco as well okay so this is a very important fact now here there are two uh, i would say minor facts or details attached to this first is that varanasi is the first city to be categorized as the cultural capital of sco okay before varanasi there was no such concept within the ambit of sco as to designate a particular city from the member cities as its cultural capital so varanasi in that sense is the very first city to be categorized as the cultural and tourism capital of the sco region okay now the second detail is that in september 2022 when india will hold the presidency of sco from then onwards varanasi would get this tag now the declaration has been made or you can say the announcement has been made but uh, it would be designated as the cultural and tourism capital once india would get its uh, presidency okay in september 2022 so these were the two minute details and here you have the eight members of sco okay so one member is missing here which has got the membership of sco very recently can you name that uh, name that country which has got the membership permanent membership of sco recently okay the latest member to join sco <coughs> okay so here the next question that we have is who heads the apex committee on performance and efficiency audit of the ministry of defense so here guys ajay kumar is the right answer so basically ministry of defense has created or formed a committee which is known as the apex committee on performance and efficiency audit and it is chaired by the defense secretary ajay kumar do remember his designation defense secretary uh, is ajay kumar's present role in the ministry of defense now what is the purpose of this committee as the name suggests that it is the apex committee the top most committee which is going to uh, do the audit of the performance and efficiency of the ministry of defense in various aspects okay so that is the basic idea i think there is nothing much complex here that you are not able to understand even so if you have something that you are not not able to get through you can mention it in the comment section below or you can uh, approach me through the various channels that i have already mentioned to, to you okay so the next question is what is the name of the mascot of department of consumer affairs for empowering consumers and generating awareness towards their rights so here the right answer is jagriti there was one mascot released by ministry of environment forest and climate change to basically create awareness about environment among the people can you guys name that mascot very easy name please mention it in the comment section so guys say hello to jagriti she is the one who is playing this role she is the mascot now what is the purpose to sensitize the people to create awareness among among the masses about their rights about their consumer rights okay so that is the basic idea so here jagriti is going to create awareness about these topics like your consumer protection act 2019 your hallmarking uh national consumer uh, helpline toll free number 1915 do remember this number this is a part of your general awareness basic knowledge do remember national consumer helpline number is 1915 then provisions of weights and measures act which is known as your legal meteorology act 
okay so jagriti is going to create awareness about this app as well decision of the central consumer protection authority and testimonials of these consumers on grievance redressal now tell me that what is the upper limit of cases that the highest uh, uh, court the supreme court would handle in case of consumer grievance okay recently the limits were changed for the district courts for the cent uh, state high courts and for the central courts in case of consumer grievances so now you have to tell me the new limits of the uh, products okay up for which the case would be delivered to the district court high court or supreme court okay the next question is which state has partnered with the united nations development program for launching the data in climate resilient agriculture now do remember the short form as well as the full form of this platform which is launched by the telangana government in partnership with undp okay a very important platform it is now the very basic idea behind this platform is to provide the data related to climate to the farmers that is the basic idea okay nothing much is there so don't try to put any additional layer on it because it will complex things okay it is very easy data in climate resilient agriculture so basically uh, the farmers they will be given the uh, weather forecast the information related to that so that they can take mitigation uh, actions to prevent the effect or the impact of the climate change on their crops as well as on their livestock so that is the basic idea and it is going to be powered by ai okay artificial intelligence and obviously if we are able to make farmers informed then it is going to increase the food security because farmers would be in a position to take immediate action and uh, it would also improve or we would say uh, strengthen the value chain of agriculture okay so that is also supply chain not the value chain okay so i have just written here what i told you so you can read it on your own okay so next question is a bit uh lengthy question you can say so which of the following statements is are true about the platform of platforms dashboard of the enam portal so here you have three statements and two options uh first statement is the platform creates a digital ecosystem for farmers and it is integrated with apida's website farmers will benefit from the expertise of different different platforms and different segments of the agricultural value chain through this platform it aims to provide various value chain services uh, like trading quality checks warehousing fintech market information transportation etc to farmers both a and b both b and c now guys individual statement out of these three can also be a right option a combination of two statements can also be a right option so what is the right answer here the right answer is option e so this new dashboard that has been launched on the nep sorry on the enam portal this platform is going to help the farmers in getting multiple services on one platform let me first show you the website or the dashboard because then you would be in a better position to understand it so here guys this is the website of enam you all know what is enam it is the online platform to facilitate buying and selling of agricultural products it gives a wider market access to the farmers because now a farmer of west bengal can sell his product throughout the country with the help of this platform that is the basic idea now prior to this only commodity state unified license online apmc online license mobile app price details incentive success stories all such informations were given on this platform or you can say these were the facilities now this platform of platform dashboard is going to provide various kind of services like trading services okay that it used to do earlier as well assaying services transportation services warehousing fintech agri advisory okay so now let's take the example of transport suppose a west bengal farmer has made a deal with a buyer in gujarat now transportation would be needed to make the good available in gujarat as well now here with the help of this dashboard farmer would go here and the buyer as well they would select the service that they need to take that is the transportation service they would 
select this they would select the uh, person who would be in charge of transportation and so and so forth they would go and make the procedures and here the benefit of doing all this is the benefit of introducing this dashboard is that now the buyers and the sellers would not have to go to individual websites they can now tackle or they can now get these services on this one platform that is the basic idea okay in order to make this process hassle free okay suppose if you need the online wallet for payment okay you have sold your potatoes in west bengal uh, you are from punjab and you now need to have a bank account or a digital wallet for your payment so earlier you used to go to the individual website like your paytm payment bank or your paytm website phone pay etc etc now you can just go here select the uh, financial services provider and you can open your wallet and all these services are available on this e nam so that is the basic idea and the benefit of this top portal i hope that now this news is clear and all what i have said is written here in the form of words okay so you can read all of that on your own the functioning of the pop which i have already explained you now this <coughs> pop was launched on a very special occasion that was the national conference of state agriculture and horticulture ministers that took place in bangalore this is a very important fact do remember and here this portal was launched and do remember that during the national conference discussions took place around nine thematic areas one of those areas was enam also okay so there were a discussion on the pm kisan sampada scheme and many schemes okay so that was just a general information that i gave you moving ahead which is india's best institute for architecture according to nirf's latest rankings so here the right answer is iit madras very easy to remember because iit madras is the one that keeps on getting this position year on year then we have ministry of education as the next point so this releases the national institutional ranking framework and guys this is the most important ranking i would say in terms of uh, your educational universities we have the ranking released by qs we have the ranking released by times also times magazine uh, these rankings are important but the ranking released by our own ministry is also very important so overall iit madras is the top university or the institution to study at if you are uh, an engineering student or anything uh, of the courses that iit madras offers okay iisc is that the second position and then we have iit bombay if we talk about only university okay then we have iisc at the top position then jawaharlal nehru university and jamia millia islamia second and third position if we only talk about the college then miranda house hindu and presidency college all these three are the top three then research institutes iisc iit madras iit delhi engineering institutes iit madras delhi and bombay 1 2 3 okay the rankings are given in that management institute iit iim ahmedabad i am bangalore and calcutta so you can see that when we talk about engineering institute we only think of iit madras as the top notch institute if we uh, talk about the scientific uh, research or the research level institutions we talk about iisc or the very first institution that come into our mind is iisc if we talk about the management top notch management institution in india what else we think of other than iim ahmedabad therefore in that sense these rankings are very easy to remember okay because the institutions are same which are there in our uh, heads or we can say the conception in the conception okay then we have the institution in pharmacy so here you need to remember jamia hamdard is the top notch uh, institution in the field of pharmacy in india then we have national institute of pharmaceutical education and research in hyderabad and punjab university as far as medical field is concerned again aims delhi is at the top position okay then you have post graduate institute of medical medical education and research and christian medical college dental 
Savita Institute of Medical and Technical Sciences is the top notch. As far as law is concerned, again, uh, we have National Law School of India University, Bangalore. And second number, pe, we have National Law University, New Delhi. Many a times and usually this university used to top, but now this has taken its position. Last but not the least, architecture. So, IIT Rudgi is at the number one, National Institute of Technology, Calicut, number two, and IIT Khayapur as number three. The next question is, uh, which bank has won the best performing bank award for 2021 to uh, 2022 under the SHG bank linkage program category from NABAR? So here, since this is the award given by NABAR itself for NABAR aspirants, it is very important, Indian bank. So it is just an award given by NABAR, so it is very easy to remember, there is nothing much for discussion. Which bank has been recognized as the world's best SME bank by UK-based financial publication Euro Money? Okay, so here DBS Bank is the right answer. DBS Bank is Development Bank of Singapore and DBS is also operational in India. Okay, so can you guys tell me the name of the bank which amalgamated with DBS because of its financial, uh, financial problems? Okay, tell me that. Uh, as far as this news is concerned, so DBS has become the world's best SME bank and this uh, accolade has been given by Euro money. So this is the second time that DBS has got this award. Nothing very much, uh, nothing very special about it. Okay, so Euro money has also awarded the world's best financial innovation of the year award to DBS fixed income execution marketplace. So DBS, uh, you can say a uh, platform has also got another award and the award is financial innovation of the year. So these two awards are given to DBS, do remember, okay? So here guys, this video ends. If you have any feedback or anything to share with me, you can do so in the comment section or on the discussions board. Thank you so much. Have a good day.